Hi, my name is Roger. How are you doing? Do you buy Christmas gifts? Do? Do you buy Christmas gifts for yourself? I do. Am, am, I, am I the only one? Well, <laughs> I have a Christmas gift here. There's actually nothing in this box. I bought myself a reverb. This reverb. Seventh Heaven from Liquid Sonics. They also have a bigger brother, uh, which cost them about $300. But I didn't think the price difference was motivated, so I bought the little brother, which cost me $69. And I bought it. This video is not sponsored in any way. My channel is too small for anyone to want to sponsor it. Well, well, if someone wants to sponsor it, they are welcome, of course. I, I won't say no. I would say no if there was something I had to do that I don't believe in. If someone wants me to test anything or something like that, of course, they are welcome to send me the stuff and I will test them and show you what I think about their the gear or the plugins or whatever. Anyway. I want to show you how I use the Seventh Heaven reverb, both compared to other reverbs and also in a mix. So let's go to the computer and I will show you that way. So let's go through this plugin and see how it sounds. See how it sounds? Uh, I mean, hear how it sounds. This is how it looks like anyway. The Seventh Heaven, we got a mix control. We got a few presets or convolutions, I might say. Halls, plates, rooms, chambers, ambience, and spaces. Here you can adjust the length of the reverb. And if we click this arrow, we have a few more options we can adjust. The pre-delay and a delay. Both are syncable to the tempo of the song. Low cut, high cut. VLF stands for very low frequencies, how much of those we want in our reverb, and a balance control between early and late reflections. What I've done here is that I just put some Apple loops into my session. So we have an acoustic guitar that sounds like this. And then I sent that acoustic guitar to three different reverbs, three different good reverbs, I might say. And I tried to adjust the reverbs sort of the same. They are all at 1.2 seconds. So we have the seventh heaven. We got a space designer, logics, convolution reverb, and an RC48, which is native instruments lexicon emulation and uh, let's see how let's see what the difference are between those reverbs so the acoustic guitar dry again sounds like this and with the seventh heaven with the space designer and with the RC48. Could you hear any difference? What I can hear is that I think the seventh heaven is a little bit cleaner. RC48 is the dirtiest of them could be in a good way. I love the RC48 for synthesizers and stuff like that. And also that the Space Designer adds some frequencies and doesn't blend in with the original signal as good as the Seventh Heaven does. But maybe it's my personal opinion, but that's the way I hear it anyway. So let's, let's listen to this again. The acoustic guitar, dry. the RC48 
The Space Designer. And The Seventh Heaven. I feel that I have to EQ the space designer much more than the rest of them. I also put in a dry drum groove that sounds like this. And uh, then here I went for a plate. So a plate with 1.5 second decay, no pre-delay, low cut at around 100 hertz, a little bit above, just to get rid of the low frequencies that the bass drum triggers. I tried to set the reverbs as close as I could to that. So we got the seventh heaven, uh, a space designer. And with the space designer, I had to put an EQ before the space designer because the space designer's EQ are after the reverb. And uh, then I went for a Universal Audio EMT-140 plate. And they sound a bit different, so let's hear what they sound. The drum set dry first. With the seventh heaven. The space designer. And the EMT-140. Could you hear the difference between those? What I think is that the seventh heaven is cleaner than the other two. I can get away with more reverb if I want more reverb with the seventh heaven than I can do with the others. I just love the EMT-140. It's familiar. It sounds like a record for me. But it's a reverb you can hear. Seventh heaven, I think, is a reverb that blends in more with the original signal, whilst EMT-40 is a tail on the signal more. Let's listen to it again. Dry... EMT-140. The Space Designer. And the Seventh Heaven. Now we have compared the Seventh Heaven to a couple of other reverbs. Let's open a session. I just recorded a song so we can try out the Seventh Heaven reverb on different instruments and in a mix and see how it sounds. In all fairness, it's hard to compare reverbs like this. You have to get to know them, you have to learn all the functions, you have to do the right adjustments. And don't forget that you also can EQ or compress the signal before and after the reverb. One thing I normally do is I EQ before the reverb because I don't want the low-end frequencies or the really high-end frequencies in my reverbs, especially for vocals. Sometimes I also put a de in front of the reverb because I don't want the S's to splatter the reverb all over the place. Sometimes you also have to EQ after the reverb. If there's boomy frequencies or something that adds up in the reverb, you have to take them out with an EQ. Many reverbs have a built-in EQ just for that. So in all fairness, I don't know if this comparison was fair or not. But I hope you can hear the quality of the reverbs anyway. Let's go to the song and how I mix with the reverb. So here's my little song. Maybe you recognize it. Now it's totally dry because I want to show you how I will use a reverb like the Seventh Heaven in a mix. So this is dry. The only thing I know
Do you recognize it? <laughs> Maybe so. I don't know. Uh, this was dry. <clears throat> and I will show you how I set up the uh, reverbs. I've made five cents. And then I have a reverb on a couple of channels also. The first one is, uh, the first one I call Office. It's a very short reverb, 0.6 seconds. And the balance in, is towards the early reflections. So it's even shorter than that. That gives the signal a little more distance, like you're backing the microphone away a little bit and get a little bit more room. And then we have a room reverb, just a one second room reverb. Both of those are mono in and stereo out. Because if I pan something to the left or right, let's say I have a guitar that I pan to the right and I put it to a stereo reverb, the reverb is going to trigger only on that side. But if it's mono in, it's going to trigger all over the place. So the guitar is on the right side, but the room is still in stereo. Uh, I can show you by doing like this. Here we have a guitar, dry, like this. And so on. If I put the room reverb on that, mono in and stereo out, it sounds like this. You see the room fills up the stereo image, but the guitar is still on the left and right. The office creates a bit of a distance to the signal, to the original signal. I can show you with the shaker here. The shaker dry is like this. And then through the office. Do you hear that the shaker like moves a couple of feet? Of, half a meter back. The rest of the reverbs are a short plate, a short plate, uh, one and a half seconds. Uh, and I've also put an EQ before it because I don't want my S's and stuff like that going into that reverb. And then a longer plate. Those are the reverbs I want to hear. Those are the reverbs that will make a tail on a signal. The rest of the reverbs are room ambiences in different kinds. And then we have a hall reverb, longer hall, 3.5 seconds and darker. Uh, what I've done is uh, I've sent, uh, let's say, a snare, for example. I took the snare and I sent it to the room reverb and the short plate reverb. It sounds like this. First, dry. And with the reverbs. There you can hear the tail of the plate reverb. On the drums, at the whole, as a whole, I put some room reverbs on the overheads, the room, uh, the room mics, and the toms and the plate is only on the snare the drums the drum sounds like this and without the reverbs Because I mic them with, with room mics, I don't need much reverb, so the difference is not that obvious. Uh, then we have the percussion, I already show you. We have the... I recorded the bass on one channel, then I cloned it, so I just copied the audio file. And I have a clean bass amp on one of the channels, and a more dirty bass amp on the other. Three electric guitars, reverb only on one of them as a send but one of the guitars have a seventh heaven reverb on like an insert and it sounds like this without it and with the reverb and now it's only on the right side because i pan the signal off the the reverb 
Why did I do that? Because I have a Rhodes on the other side doing the same thing, like this. And with the reverb. And those two together. Those channels are the only channels with reverb as an insert. We have a piano, a B3. The B3, it's actually my Nord Electro, but my Hammond sound. The Hammond sound goes through the long plate because I wanted it to feel more back in the mix, and it sounds like this. Let's, let's exaggerate the reverb so you can hear it. I tried to move the B3 back in the mix with the reverb. Uh, I have uh, the violins, a little bit of the office and a little bit of the hall. Actually not so much reverb. The lead vocals uh, have the office, the short plate and a little bit of the hall. The short plate is what you're gonna hear. I also put it through a couple of delays, one mono eighth note delay and one stereo quarter note. Sounds like this. A dream of learning, dream of knowing. Uh, the chorus, uh, vocals, uh, the harmonies are all drowned in reverb, of course, like they should be because I want to move them back in the mix to create a three-dimensional space. I have a lot of reverb on the background vocals. So let's do like this again. We listen to the mix dry and then we listen to it with reverbs and see if you can spot the difference. The only thing I know There was our dry mix. Let's turn the reverbs on and see if you can hear the difference. The only thing I know And there you go, that was my reverb settings with the Seventh Heaven from Liquid Sonics. So was this a good idea? To test the plugin within a mix and compare the plugin to other plugins of the same quality, so to speak. Tell me if you like that idea. There are hundreds of videos going through what the plugins can do, what functions they have. So check those out if you are interested in that. I want to show you how I use them and how they behave in a context. Please let me know if I could have done anything differently. Please let me know if this was a good idea or not. And uh, the Swedish word of today. Reverb, they simulate rooms. Room in Swedish is rum, rum, and roger that. <laughs>